Welcome. We're happy you're joining us for the CPD webinar. CPD and apps to support math for This engaging session will focus on supporting diverse learners on all platforms and devices in using iOS apps, Google Chrome apps and extensions, and more to supplement, to supplement math curricula and student skills in the classroom. We're excited to welcome back one of our CPD faculty members, Diana Petschauer. Diana is a Resna certified ATP, um, AT consultant and founder for AT for Education and Access for Employment. She has over 20 years of experience and brings us today just a little bit of her wealth of knowledge. Uh, we do want, always want to hear from you, so if you fill out a brief survey after the webinar, um, we can download your certificate of participation. I'll pass it off to Diana. Thanks. Great. Thanks so much, Anna Maria. Thanks, everyone, for joining us from so many areas this afternoon. Um, as mentioned, I'm Diana Petschauer, a Resna Certified Assistive Technology Professional and founder of AT for Education. This is our website here if you'd like to be in contact with us after today, and all of our contact information is on your handout, atfored.com. We have 14 consultants uh, on our expert team, and we do travel nationally. We provide the assistive technology evaluations, consultation, training, workshops, webinars, for students K through 12, as well as higher ed, and those transitioning to the workplace. And we also work with the adult population in the workplace environment and the community as well. So thanks for joining me this afternoon. Here is a look at your handout real quick. Hopefully I don't make you too dizzy. This is the link. It's also posted in the chat. And I believe that CTD also posted it for you to access. Um, this is the matrix for supporting math skills for diverse learners. And I am going to start reflecting my iPad screen here in just a moment after I just give you a brief rundown here of what's on your handout. Um, the accessibility features, I'm going to show a couple of them that are particularly going to be working in some of the apps that I'm going to show you this afternoon. Um, there's a nice link there um, by Luis Perez who has all of the videos on YouTube or the accessibility features because I won't be able to show them all to you this evening, but they're really great videos step-by-step step how to use the accessibility features and they're captioned. Um, and then it goes on to list some of the apps that I'm going to show you this evening. I won't certainly have time to show you all of these. We have one hour. I'm going to try and fit in some of the best of the best. Um, and a description and whether it works in Google, iOS, on the web. And then below that I'm going to be switching over to Google and show you some of the resources available through Google. Um, and then below that are some web resources, specific videos as well as websites uh, for some great math supports and resources also. So going to get started first by reflecting my iPad screen here so that you can follow along with me. If you have questions, feel free to type them in the chat and um, hopefully we can answer them as we go along or towards the end as well. So one of the first things that I mentioned are the accessibility features on the iOS devices. So that's any size iOS device, whether it's an iPad, iPad Pro, iPhone, iPad Mini. There are accessibility features in these devices that are really robust and may make these the devices that you would use with your learners uh, depending on the task activity at hand, including math. And um, they are very robust and um, cannot be replicated on other devices. So if you go into your settings, your gray gear icon, I'm just going to tap on that here. On the left hand side I tap on general and on the right hand side I tap on accessibility. And again, very robust accessibility features. This could be an all day training, not just an hour training. Just want to focus on a couple that are going to play a role in some of the apps that I'm going to be showing you. Um, Zoom, which is the second one down under voiceover, many of us are familiar with the reverse pinch gesture that we can use on an iPad if we're in a website um, or an email and some other places where we can do the reverse pinch and we get that nice magnification. Uh, for example, here in this menu I can't do the reverse pinch. I can't use two fingers and expand this screen on the menu. I can't do it on my home page of apps. And in particular apps that we use with some of our learners, um, we can't magnify and we need that additional zoom. So that second one down zoom allows us to do that when the reverse pinch does not work. So I'm going to show you that. When zoom is turned on you can see that right below that it tells you the gesture that you would use to use zoom. It's double tap with three fingers. Any three fingers you have to have three points of contact and then one two on your screen. 
and currently in the Zoom region, I have Window Zoom chosen. So I'm going to take three fingers and double tap my iPad screen. And you see now what shows up is this magnification window. And I can choose to magnify different parts of the screen by moving this window with my finger. So that little tab at the bottom of the window, I'm using my finger to move this additional zoom window on the screen. And this will work wherever I am on the iPad, within apps, on the main screen, emails, text messages, and that's what I'm going to show you is how we use it in some of the apps today. If I tap on that little tab at the bottom, you can see that I can adjust the magnification within this window. I can also choose a filter. And many of our learners who have a visual impairment, low vision, legally blind, cortical visual impairment really need high contrast like this white on black that you see on my screen now for their worksheets, their handouts, activities and that can be really difficult as an educator or professional to provide the high contrast with a lot of the work that they may be trying to do in the classroom but if you have it digitally on the iPad this is just built in as an accessibility feature and you can provide that for your learners. If I tap on that little tab again I can also choose to take off that filter and I can choose to resize this lens so I can make it longer or I can make it a square and smaller I could have it just hover over one particular part of the page if I need to so this is really handy to know about three finger double tap makes it disappear three finger double tap brings it back when I need it so I can choose to use zoom whenever I need this I have some other um, options here if I put it on um, Full screen zoom, the three finger double tap will increase the entire size of my screen. For today's purposes, I'm going to keep it on window zoom so I can show you what that looks like within the apps. And then also to be aware of the display accommodations. So um, as we mentioned, invert colors and there's also smart invert available if you're on iOS 11, which means it will reverse the color of the text, but not the images. So if you don't want the images to be the invert color, it's nice that you now have that option with Smart Invert. And also the speech, make sure that you have Speak Selection and Speak Screen, as well as Highlight Content. Um, you can change the voices, the speaking rate, and this is going to allow them to choose what text they want to have read out loud, instead of having everything spoken out loud on the screen. One of the main things to think about when you're in the accessibility features at the very bottom of this menu says accessibility shortcut. It might be in a slightly different place if you are not on iOS 11 with me. And with the accessibility shortcut, you see here I have a few things checked off. I have guided access and magnifier as well as a smart invert and voiceover, which means I can do the triple click, you can see that top, triple click the home button to pull up the menu for when I need to use these accessibility features so that I don't have to keep coming back into my settings. So what that looks like if I hit the home button on my iPad and now I hit that home button three times, one, two, three, and this is the menu that I receive. So I can choose to have smart invert or magnifier or voiceover wherever I am on the iPad, whatever app I'm in. I don't have to go back to my settings to turn it on. And I'm going to be using that today with some of the things that I show you. Now before I dive into my folder of math apps, some of the other apps that I want to introduce you to are apps that can make your current assignments or activities accessible to your learners. So for example, at the very top middle of the page is Claro PDF Pro. And in Claro PDF Pro, we can have access to our worksheets, assessments, documents in digital format. Now, I will tell you, of course, that I'm not a huge fan of worksheets or handouts. Hopefully you're not as well. But there are always going to be some components in classroom activities that are written assessments. And sometimes there are going to be worksheets and handouts passed out to our learners who either need to have it read out loud if they have a learning disability or visual impairment or they need to have the high contrast or a way to type or handwrite onto this document in a digital format. So this is just an example of a PDF worksheet that I pulled in here. Um, and what I'll show you is in the top left hand corner when I tap on this folder icon, I have a few different ways to get these PDF worksheets into um, this particular app in order to make it accessible. So I can open any worksheet or handout or document that I've scanned in 
and saved in Google Drive or Dropbox. So many schools and learners are using Google Drive. Many professionals are using Dropbox. Most scanners, when you scan any worksheet or document, um, if you're sending it to yourself through email or another method, most scanners scan directly to PDF. So that's great. Save that PDF in Google Drive, Dropbox, or you can even open it directly in Claro PDF Pro. Your other option is at the bottom there, photo to PDF. So you can take a picture of that PDF worksheet or document. Um, if you choose to do that or if you pull in another worksheet or handout that isn't already accessible, this does have the option for built-in OCR, optical character recognition. So you see on the bottom of that menu in the top right says convert PDF. This will convert it quickly and easily so that you can now edit this document, listen to it, which I'm going to show you. So for an example, if you have a learner who needs to focus on one particular part or needs it, again, magnified or larger, just the reverse pinch is working nicely on this particular worksheet or handout. You don't have to blow it up. You can also provide this in high contrast. One, two, three, my accessibility shortcut. I choose Smart Invert. This handout is now high contrast. Again, very near impossible for you to do this with other types of paper documents or worksheets for your learners, but you can provide it digitally very quickly. Turn off the Smart Invert. Voice over on. Oops. Chloro PD Lance Alert. Accessibility voice over off. Hit the wrong one, so now I'm going to do it again. There we go. Smart Invert. So now I can also use the built-in text-to-speech that is in Claro PDF to listen to the directions or instructions on this handout just by tapping. Oops, I have to turn up my volume there. You can change the settings within Claro PDF. So you can change the voice name. I have Ava currently. You can change the speech settings. So certainly speed it up, slow it down. You can choose a highlight color, and I have speak on tap and stop after sentence. You have can have it continuously read or not. That's all personal preference. And then, of course, they can edit this or annotate. So the second icon in the top left looks like a little pencil on paper. I can choose to handwrite. I can choose the color ink as well as the thickness. So I could handwrite within this document. I can also erase if I make a mistake. I can type the numbers in here. And in addition to the, you can move this after you type just so you can see, you can line it up, you can edit it, you can delete it, you can speak it. Um, in addition to the typical keyboard that's available on the screen, the iOS keyboard that comes on the iPad. Certainly you could use the microphone to speak your answers in, which I'll show you in another document. And you could also use a third-party keyboard. So there's additional keyboards that you can download. Keeble is one example. I like the larger print, the larger keys, the high contrast, the color-coded vowels, word prediction if you need it. Kidogo Plus is another excellent one. Color-coded vowels and numbers certainly. So if we were to finish this document, you can then save it to Google Drive to share with educators or professionals. You can email it, you can print it, all of the same things that you can do um, with any other document on the iPad. If I were to open another document up, actually I already had it up there, so you can see this is an example of a main idea worksheet. Um, again, you could speak your answers into this, so if this happened to be word problems or some other type of uh, assessment that they were working on and they were going to be filling this in, speak my answer, so I just hit the microphone, you can change this size of text, move it, edit it, etc. Now there's another app listed on your handout called Go Worksheet Maker. You can see that on my screen. It's similar. Um, it adds a few other options like drag and drop answers, uh, which when you think about our learners who have difficulty with fine motor or um, difficult with a physical disability, you can create the drag and drop answers, which could be much easier for them to complete an assessment. There's also the option for verbal answers, audio recording of answers in Go Worksheet. So just think about those types of ways to make your assignments accessible to um, some of your learners you might be working with. Um, one more before I dive into the 
math folder is Notability. And I really like Notability for a few different um, features, not only as specifically for note taking for some of our learners, but certainly for instruction. And this is really great as far as a multi-sensory approach for instruction for our learners. And so you can see right now my folders on the left hand side are color coded for specific subjects. If I tap on history, history is open. It says history at the top. I know I'm in my history folder. If I tap on math, it opens up and it says math at the top and I know I'm in my math folder. So I can set up folders for every class, including math. And in the top right now, what looks like the little pencil on paper again, this is where I can start a new note in my math folder. Whether I'm taking notes during math class to make it more accessible to me later, or if a learner comes to a teacher, a professor, instructor, educator, paraprofessional, anyone after class and needs additional instruction for something that was difficult for them, this is the place to do it. Don't do that math problem on a piece of paper and then send the student home and then they forget what you told them. Do it in notability and this is why. So in the top right, if you tap on the wrench, you can choose your paper first of all. So you can choose something that has high contrast and lines. You can choose graph paper if you're going to be showing graphing. Larger or smaller graph, you can have certainly plain paper. I like the high contrast. This is also where you could use white on black. So if you chose the black background, white ink for someone who needed uh, that, that type of accessibility. And then in the top right where you see the microphone, I'm going to start the recording. So now it's recording as I'm speaking. I'm going to tap on the pencil. You can see here again, I can change my ink. I can change the thickness. So if I was teaching a math lesson, I'm doing it here for the learner. I go through step by step. Maybe I'm going to be drawing pictures. Maybe I'm going to be graphing and that learner is going to be listening along with me. Um, I could highlight some important steps. You can change that highlight color and the thickness. You can certainly erase if you make a mistake. You can type text. And you can pull in pictures. So you may want to take a photo um, of a particular math problem and pull that into this lesson. You may want to take a photo of that math worksheet or pull in a web clip from some of the great math websites that I'm sharing with you where there's some really great videos. Um, you can do any of those things and pull them into this particular note. And now I'm going to pause the audio recording and I'm going to play it back for you by tapping on the beginning of my math problem. Some important steps. You can change that highlight color and the thickness. You can certainly... It actually jumped ahead on me there. Um, it could be the air server that I'm reflecting, but typically it writes right back over the math problem step by step or any of the notes. It writes right back over it and they have that recording to go along with it. So think about your math lessons. I have one particular learner who needed this multi-sensory approach she, um, when she was testing with typical assessments that were inaccessible to her with a cognitive disability, she was testing at a second grade math level and she was using this app to learn one step and then two step equations. And she did five problems, the same five problems for a week using Notability with her instructors. And then when she went to take the assessment, she passed one step and two step equations, which got her to high school graduation. And a big part of it was using Notability for that multi-sensory approach. So um, you can save any of these with in Google Drive. You can share it with your learners. This is a great teaching tool. It's a great note-taking tool, but it's a great teaching tool. And if you share it with all of your students, certainly this is a great teaching tool that you could have projected on the whiteboard or a smart board. And you send it to all of your learners as long as they have the free Adobe Reader, they'll be able to read these notes as well. If your learner has um, notability on their iPad, you can certainly do your lessons on their iPad so that they take it home with them. Or if you have your own iPad and do it in Notability, you can send it to your learners who have Notability and they will get the exact lesson as you did it. Okay, so now diving into some of our math apps. Going into my math folder here. Make sure I'm staying on traffic track with what I want to show you as much as possible this evening or this afternoon. So I'm going to open Panther Math Paper. And again, these apps and resources are listed on your handout for you to go back to later with a link to get to them and many more that I won't be able to show. 
So I really like Panther Math Paper. When you open it up, you can get to the quick guide if you're not familiar with how to use this app. It's um, nice and succinct. And when you do start using this app, what's great about it is anywhere you tap on the screen, any of these blocks, I'm tapping on it with one finger, is where I begin typing with symbols. So again, for our learners that might have difficulty with fine motor, a physical disability, they can't write those numbers, maybe dyslexia or dysgraphia, they end up writing those numbers backwards oftentimes, it can be frustrating. For your learners who might have a difficult time lining up their numbers and doing their math work, and you can do everything here. Um, I mean, you can certainly line up your problems the other way, and you can move the paper certainly to get to your math problems. There are the symbols available here for very complex math, advanced math. I have high school and college students using this particular app as well. You can see weight, geometry, volume, advanced math, money, etc. After you have completed the math lesson, you can save it to Google Drive, you can print it, you can email it, any of those options. You can even take notes on the screen first. So a really great option for accessible math being able to type using the math symbols instead of handwriting. And again, if you use that triple click home and invert colors, if they needed this to be white on black, another great way to provide that accessibility. I love the Braining Camp apps. So the developer of particular apps, once you find a really good developer, it's nice to look into the other apps by that developer. Braining Camp, Brain, I-N-G, Camp apps. Um, are one of those developers that I really love. I'm going to open up Solving Equations by Braining Camp. With each Braining Camp app, you get these four components. And it starts with a lesson that is interactive, and then there's a manipulative, the questions, and the challenge. Again, I really like the multi-sensory approach for our learners who may have difficult time understanding a concept. And these apps and these resources and technologies, in addition to providing access to something that may not be accessible, they're really great for supporting the instruction or curriculum. The assistive technology never replaces the skill, and it never replaces the instruction. It enhances it, and it bridges that gap and helps support it. So what I like is, again, this is set up like a whiteboard. And these particular lessons are video lessons. So if I hit the play in the bottom right, the equation 4t plus 5 equals 53 states that a train moving at 4 kilometers a minute and already 5 kilometers down a 53 kilometer track will reach the end after t minutes. Ooh, that can be quite intimidating. So if we continue on. To find t, the number of minutes it will take for the train to reach the end of the 53 kilometer track, you need to know how to solve equations. An equation is a mathematical sentence stating that two expressions are equal. Like a balanced scale, the left side equals the right side. So there's tools on the bottom here that are very similar to the whiteboard um, or the smart board. You can erase so you can make this interactive for the learner. Or again, you can be projecting this and using this for all of your students. It's a great multi-sensory approach. And the uh, manipulative does come up throughout the lesson that they'll use. So you can see it here. Consider the it tells them exactly how to use that manip manipulative. And then you can also use it separately if you're trying to support a concept. They're using this uh, particular tool to balance an equation and balance both sides. Um, a really nice tool there. And then, of course, if you are interested, they can do the questions and the challenge to help solidify that. Um, there are many uh, Braining Camp apps that I'm a fan of. The Solving Equations and also the Fractions one is really excellent, but there's quite a few here to check out. Now, another app developer, which is really great, is the Math Learning Center. And the Math Learning Center provides access to free apps on the iPad for the Chromebook or in Google Chrome on other devices and as web resources. I'm going to point out a couple of them here because they're free and they're wonderful. Very interactive, again, to use as math manipulatives or as a multi-sensory approach to support that curriculum or instruction. And when we switch over to um, my laptop in Chrome, I'll show you some of them and how they look in Google Chrome as well. Uh, so for example, the number line 
a nice way again to have a digital number line to support whatever concept it is that you are working on in that particular day. You can um, handwrite certainly, you can choose a color um, to get started, you can add the math problem. So now that's on the screen, so if I wanted to erase this, for example, we can start at 3 and add 7. And what do we get to? Um, so it can be a really great interactive tool. They have some uh, built-in options here that you can certainly manipulate or use as well. So again, just a nice approach digitally. Um, and again, this tool is available on all devices as a web resource and also in Google. So if your students are using various devices in the classroom, a lot of classes are BYOD, bring your own device. Um, and a lot of learners are using various devices. So it's nice that this is available on all of them. So if the teacher is using this as part of instruction, no matter what device the learners are using, they can be doing this along with the instructor. We have number pieces there and money pieces. Money pieces is pretty neat. So you can um, pull in the dollar, for example, and show exactly how much of that dollar quarters is, for example. So how many quarters to make a dollar. And you can do the same thing with the dimes and the nickels. So great, you know, great visual and supporting this with some hands-on manipulatives if you happen to have the play money or even real money. I mean, it's not that much if you're taking out a pocket full of change these days to use with some of your learners for those concepts. But again, some great options for visual manipulatives here. And GeoBoard. <coughs> so being able to take these elastics and drag them like you would on the GeoBoards and I really like this one specifically. Uh, I was in a classroom, a preschool or kindergarten classroom with some young kiddos who were working on the geo boards with their, their teacher and their paraprofessional. And it was one of their centers that was set up. And um, there were two kiddos in there, one who just had difficulty with fine motor and another who was um, utilizing a wheelchair and had a physical disability. And it was, it was difficult or impossible for them to be using the geo boards with their friends or their teacher. And this was a method that they could do. They did have the um, physical capability of isolating a point. That's all I'm doing. I'm just using one finger here to drag the elastic and um, create these shapes on the geo board. So I think it's a nice option as, uh, again, a, a digital manipulative. And so many options on the bottom there to change it and customize it as far as colors and adding math problems and things like that as well. Park Math HD. Again, when we talk Dad, about another Dad, app developer, this is a great one. Welcome to Park Math. Today we're going to learn how to count. Swing and count with me. So there's counting, of course. One. And everything's interactive. If I tap on the top Three. left of the kite, I can get into my other lessons. You see the little music at the top there. I can turn the music on. So that can be playing in the background, or I can turn that off. There are patterns. There's counting. There's subtraction. Help me finish the pattern. Excellent. There's balancing. So quite a few options here for beginner math skills. If one duck climbs up, how many will be at the top of the slide? And then we also have writing wizards. So if you have young learners or even older learners who might still be working on writing their particular numbers, I like writing wizard because it will demonstrate to a, a student how to write the number. Two. And then it also guides them in the correct direction for writing the number in an engaging way. And um, if they stop, you can see that it's going to continue to guide them for drawing that particular number. And I like that this particular app also has the users and reports. So you can get the tracing history um, and you can replay that to see and to keep track of the progress that they're making, if that's something that you're keeping track of and that you can share with parents or the team as well.
long touch division. So you can see, I like that this has the direction specifically for the person that is using this app. It's asking drag the eight into the digits of 256 until just 25 is highlighted. I have my iPad sideways here. Try this again. There we go. And now it tells you to tap on the plus to see how many times 8 goes into 25. And then pull down the 6. So you can see it's very interactive as far as walking an individual through step by step how to solve this um, particular problem. Algebra Touch is similar. You can choose the particular lesson that you're going to be working on, whether it's simplifying, like terms, multiplying, factors. Um, and at the beginning of the tutorial, it will tell you that um, the different gestures that you can use in order to combine like terms. And it won't allow you to do something that you shouldn't be able to do. Um, so it won't allow you to combine unlike terms and things of that nature. Okay. Counting Money and Money, these are both great free apps for, um, again, that particular lesson. And what I really want to show after I just give you a brief overview here where you can do the 380. Um, and you can turn off the sounds, turn on the sounds, etc. One of the things that I like to point out specifically with this app, um, which applies to any of those great free apps that you might download, are the ads on the bottom. And so what I like to remind anyone who's using the iPad, if you have learners who are using these free apps, you don't necessarily have to upgrade for a dollar or two to get rid of the ads like it asks you at the beginning here um, if you want to get rid of the ads. All you need to do is go into your settings on the iPad and turn on airplane mode. And if you turn on airplane mode, if you're familiar with doing so when you travel, it's going to block all of those ads from coming in. You won't be able to get on the internet, but most likely when you're using these apps, you don't need access to the internet. So if you're using those particular apps where you don't need access to the internet and you don't want those annoying ads to pop up, just put your uh, iPad on airplane mode um, and it's not going to pop up to distract your students. Desmos and uh, Talking Graphing Calculator are also great to know about. Desmos is free on the iPad, on the Chromebook, as well as a web resource. One of the links at the bottom of your handout is a link to the Desmos website where they give a lot of ideas for activities that you can be doing with your learners using the graphing calculator. And oftentimes a graphing calculator is not accessible to some of our students, again, for either um, low vision purposes or physical disabilities, they may not be able to access that typical scientific calculator. So it's nice to offer them an on-screen one. Once again, you could use this with inverse contrast if you needed the high contrast, white on black, uh, visually for a particular learner. And there is also the uh, talking scientific calculator, if you're not familiar, that will also speak out loud as they're using this particular calculator, which can be very beneficial. Um, and this one is nice where you can choose the color coding or you can choose the black and white and high contrast as well. So some great tools for your learners to be able to use while on the iPad. Again, I can't get into um, all of the apps that are on your list because I do want to switch over to the laptop to make sure we give enough time to Google Chrome as well. So I'm going to switch by stopping the reflection here and I'm going to switch over to my laptop screen. If you happen to have any questions as I'm switching over, please feel free to type them into the chat. So first, right now, what I want to show you is that I'm in Google Chrome. I'm in the Google Chrome browser. That's the little beach ball icon at the bottom of my screen. You can access the Google Chrome browser on any laptop or desktop, whether you have Mac, Windows, PC, etc. Google Chrome is free on 
all of those devices, as well as the Windows tablet. And for your learners who are using Chromebooks, those Chromebooks only run the Google Chrome browser. So if you're new to Chromebooks and you're not familiar with Chromebooks, you cannot download any software onto those Chromebooks. You can only use the tools that are available in the Google Chrome Web Store. So if I open up a new window on my screen here, and the top left hand side is my little icon that says apps. It's a little square, mini square, some people call it a waffle. And when I click on my app icon, it will take me to my page or pages of apps. And you can see here I have several, so I can scroll through just like I would on a tablet. Several pages of apps. You can see I have some of my math apps here as well. And my extensions show up as little icons to the top right of my screen where my mouse is now, to the right of my URL browser. So my mouse has hovered over the extension called Extensity. I'll be showing you Equatio. You get both apps and extensions from the same place, which is the Google Chrome Web Store. That's this icon here where my mouse is. It looks like a little beach ball in a beach bag and it says Web Store. If you don't see that icon on your screen, if you happen to be using a Chromebook, you want to use the little magnifying glass in the bottom left to search for all of your apps and you should see that icon. If you're using a school device and you happen to be following along or watching this webinar later, if you watch the recording, um, your school may block the Chrome Web Store. So be aware of that as well. If you don't see the icon, you can just do a simple search, Google Chrome Web Store, and you're going to get to this exact same place. Now, these Chrome apps and extensions follow the user's login. So these apps and extensions that you see on my screen are linked to my account. I can log out of my laptop. I can go to any school and log into a Chromebook or a desktop or a laptop at that school, and I'm going to see all of my tools that I have downloaded under my account. It's the same for your learners. So if you have students who have specific apps and extensions that they have downloaded under their Google account, they're going to see them at school, at home, on their own devices, at a public library, as long as the library has Google Chrome. If they're logged in, they have these tools to utilize. It's not just on one device that has to go back and forth from home to school. Now, where do these Google Chrome apps and extensions work? And that's a little bit trickier to explain, so hopefully I'm able to do it well for you. These larger apps that are part of the G Suite, Google Drive, Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides, work on all devices. So my Google Drive with all of my documents, my sheets, and my slides, all of those are going to work on my laptop. They're going to work on a Chromebook. They'll work on my phone. They'll work on an Android device. They're available on all devices and they sync. So I can save all of my documents or my sheets or my slides, which are presentations and PowerPoints, and I can save PDFs and anything else in my Google Drive. This is my storage to save everything, and I can get to it from any device no matter where I am. It's great backup professionally and educationally, whether you use Google Drive or another cloud storage, because if your device gets a virus or is damaged, you haven't lost everything. It's all backed up. You can buy another computer, log into your Google Drive, and everything is there. Or your iPad or whatever device you're choosing to use. These additional apps and extensions that you see on my screen, like Typing Club, Useful Periodic Table, which is an interactive periodic table, Mind Mapping, Connected Mind, all of these are going to work on the Chromebooks specifically. So these apps previously you were able to download them from the Chrome Web Store, and they would also work on the laptops, Mac, Windows, etc. And there's still a couple of the Chrome-based ones that will work. But the majority of these additional apps that you get from the Chrome Web Store now are able to be utilized on those Chromebooks, which is why it's great for all the schools who are using Chromebooks with their learners. The extensions, again, are an extension of what you're working on, which you're going to see as I, as I demonstrate that. It's an extension of what the person is working on or the student is working on. So these extensions can support me in Google Docs. They can support me in Google Slides or on a website if I'm researching. And they will work on all devices, laptops, Chromebooks, 
Windows devices, um, not the Android and not the iPad. So the iPad accessibility features and apps that I just showed you are great for the iOS devices. These particular Chrome apps and extensions are particularly useful if you're on the other types of devices, whether it's a Chromebook or a laptop. So hopefully that explains um, a good deal if you are not familiar. And what I want to show you are some of the apps that I mentioned from the Math Learning Center, those free apps from the Math Learning Center. This is what they would look like on a Chromebook. I want to go to the Fractions one. You can see if I open up fractions here. So uh, whether the particular user is going to use their mouse or if you happen to have touchscreen Chromebooks, which a lot of schools have available as well, you could be engaging them in a particular lesson for fractions. You can move these. You can fill it. You could create another option here. Again, you can choose to use the handwriting portion, choose the color, so you could be doing the lesson here interactively with the particular learner. Again, another multi-sensory approach and also providing access for someone who might have difficult with another type of manipulative. We love Cuisinier rods. We love um, the number blocks, we love cubes, and all of those excellent things that we are using as manipulatives for our learners when we're teaching math. These are great ways to provide those digital manipulatives and access. And again, just another approach because these are really great apps and extensions and tools to be using with all of our students, all of them. The educators and professionals can be using these, especially because they're free, these particular ones from the Math Learning Center. Um, they can be utilized with all of the learners on various devices, uh, but be providing that support for your, for your learners who may be a little bit, um, you know, maybe having more of a challenge, which is great. So when we're thinking about universal design for learning. We really want to be thinking about using these tools for everyone and how are we providing that support for our learners who may need more particular needs. Go back into my apps here. We have the number pieces, very similar to Cuisinier rods. Again, I'm a big fan. We have the hundreds, the tens, and the ones, which is really great. Again, you could be setting up a, a math chart if you wanted to use the handwriting portion to, you know, write hundred. And of course, I don't have a touch screen, so this will look messy using the mouse. And then we could have the tens and then we could have the ones, or if we wanted to spell that out with words instead of numbers um, and be putting things into those particular areas. There is an eraser um, for these lessons as well. So if you happen to make a mistake. Diana, which, which app is this? This one is the number pieces by the Math Learning Center. And if you go to the link at the bottom of the handout for the Math Learning Center, it does list all of the apps that they have available. I'm going to go over to an extension now called Equatio. And I did put a, a few videos regarding Equatio on your handout. I'll just pull up the links here so you can see. Um, because there's so many different parts of Equatio that can really be supportive. And they just added Equatio Mobile, so I'll show you that video in just a second. And then I put Math Spaces and using Equatio in Google Docs. You can also use them in Google Forms. Uh, to create accessible assessments. Google Forms is just phenomenal for any type of assessment that you are creating for your learners because you can choose multiple choice, fill in the blank, and um, if you're creating it in Google Forms, they can use these apps and extensions that I'm showing you to complete that assessment, which means if you're creating an assessment using Equatio in Google Forms, which um, Google Forms is free, then you're able to allow your learners who need this particular um, extension to complete the assessment or again all of your learners because Equatio is really great for everyone but here are some of the reasons why you might use it for some of um, your diverse learners who have more particular needs. So I'm in a typical Google Doc 
And in my equatio settings, first of all, I might have to do a little refresh here. I'm going to do a refresh. If you happen to use any apps or extensions, uh, what I'm doing now is I'm hitting the refresh because they do uh, require Wi-Fi connection. So you need to be connected directly to internet or have really good secure Wi-Fi. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about your schools. If you don't happen to have good Wi-Fi, uh, you may need to update that before using these apps and extensions. Um, and you may also want to consider direct connect in a lab or something of that nature. Okay, so with Equatio, click on the little icon for Equatio while I'm in a Google Doc here. In the settings, I can choose to, under my options, I can choose my math options. So I can choose to increase this font size for the math specifically, which is great. Language, absolutely. And I currently have math prediction and formulas on. I don't have chemistry at that time, but I could choose to turn on the chemistry prediction as well. Now, if I wanted to start typing my math using the equation editor, I can do a few different things here. I can type the math symbols, which is really great. I could also, let me just put a few more things in here first. I could handwrite, whether I'm using my mouse or again, really great for the touchscreen devices. Come up back up here. because it's not easy to handwrite with <laughs> a mouse on a trackpad. But if you're using a Bluetooth mouse, that probably would be easier. Um, or again, if you have the option to have a touchscreen device, then you certainly would be neater as opposed uh, to using a mouse. But the really great feature that I love, that I have a couple of users using right now, I just could not wait to tell them about this product as soon as it came out on the market um, because I have two particular um, students who do utilize a wheelchair, have a physical disability, one who's had a physical disability most of his life and has always had a scribe. Um, even though he's, he's brilliant, he's very capable of math and so many other things, but he's had a scribe because handwriting has been difficult for him. And another user who had a traumatic um, injury recently um, and is now new to utilizing a wheelchair and not having fine motor uh, ability, uh, which is really, really uh, difficult for him to adjust to. And also had a scribe and both of them are now transitioning to college. And so what's really great is that there's also the option here for speech input. So I'm gonna click on the microphone. 5X plus 2X equals and it recognizes fractions and other types of math that you may be speaking so I'm going to click it again so I can show you that one half plus one fourth and you can see that it's typing the math symbols as I'm speaking them which is just incredible and I can insert this math into my Google Doc See if I can lower this window for you so you can see it. Whoops, hit the wrong one. It does work with Desmos graphing calculator, which I just hit by accident and you could see there. So the particular learner that may have difficulty, again, fine motor, dyslexia, dysgraphia, physical disability, who needs the option of typing with math symbols or speaking their math. And this also works with read and write. So this Equatio extension is by the company called Text Help. And this works with the read and write extension to have this math read out loud. Five X plus two X five X plus two X equals one half plus one fourth one half plus one fourth equals which of course does not make any sense, but at least you can see and hear that it does read math accurately, which is really great. So not only being able to type the math, speak the math, but also have it read out loud. And they just recently added Equatio Mobile. So they've always had the math spaces. So let me just show you that. 
So in the math spaces, educators and students can be working together or educators can be uh, working to create lessons here and then sharing them with students. So you can share this with students just like you would um, any other type of document or um, Google presentation, et cetera. So you can be using math spaces for collaboration. And they recently added, as I mentioned, here it is, Equatio Mobile, just give you a brief overview, where you're able to use your phone or your tablet to take pictures of math, um, and it converts handwritten math to symbols, and you can insert it into your document. So even, again, thinking about using Equatio, um, so this works in, in Google Docs, you can also use it in Windows, you can use it in Microsoft Office Word, and now you can use it with your tablets as well. Equatio Mobile lets you use your phone or tablet to add handwritten math, images, and more into your G Suite apps and Equatio Math Space. It's a mobile companion to Equatio on your Chromebook or computer. To get started, go to m.equate.io on your phone or tablet. Make sure you're in Safari on an iOS device and Chrome on an Android device. Once you're signed in, you'll be taken to your active documents screen. Equatio Mobile will find the G Suite apps and math spaces that you have open with Equatio on your computer or Chromebook. The list will automatically update. Choose a math space or document to start inserting some math. To handwrite math right on your phone, choose Draw Math. When you're done, tap the check mark. You can convert your handwritten math to typed math by choosing Save as Math. Then tap the blue Insert button to add it to your document. You'll see your math instantly added to the math space on your computer or Chromebook. You can also insert your handwritten math as is by choosing Save as Image. This is great for students who may not have a touchscreen device on their desk, but they've got a tablet or have a phone in their pocket. The record feature lets you dictate math into your microphone. X equals 60 degrees. Tap the check mark to convert to math. And tap the insert button to add to your document. So those videos are all included at the end of your handout <clears throat> so that you understand a little bit more about Equatio if you want to look into it further. But really, the accessibility for math has just come such a long way for so many of our students and adults that we may be working with. And um, Equatio is just such a wonderful product on so many devices now to provide that accessibility. Some of the other resources I want to make sure that you're aware of um, that are links at the bottom of your handout as well. I did put a couple of um, resources for websites. This one in particular you may already be familiar with is called um, Math Playground. Now again, you see that there's some ads popping up here. If you add an extension, a free extension called AdBlock Plus, I'm just pulling it up here. If you add AdBlock Plus and then refresh your screen, it will get rid of those ads so that it's not distracting to your learners, uh, whether they're on a laptop or a Chromebook. So I'm just refreshing here, which will bring me back to the Math Playground uh, website, and now you see that advertisement is blocked, which is really great. And on Math Playground, one of the really great components to check out is the thinking blocks. Uh, thinking blocks are apps that are free, and um, some really great tools, and in particular, this video will show you how to model and solve word problems using the thinking block apps and tools. Really, really great. So for your learners who may struggle with choosing the important components in a word problem and how to solve those word problems, check out Math Playground and Thinking Block. And um, I did put the website for the Math Learning Center, so you will have um, get to see all of the apps that they have available there. Another great website with um, several math activities called Math Pickle. And some options for software, if you're still interested in software, Math Type, um, as well as Math Talk. We do have some older students and adults still using Math Talk um, really well, which combined with Dragon can be very efficient. And FFX. 
So if you are or not already familiar with FOFX um, software, what's really great about FOFX is that they will give you a free subscription for students who qualify with a disability. So that link is on your handout as well. It's, um, you see the Empower Foundation here. Um, it's free for the learners who may have a difficult time with doing some of those things like graphing um, and other types of things. So they will give a free copy and they just require a little bit of documentation, but they will provide a, a free copy for those students, which is great. Also want to make sure that you are aware of APH, American Printing House for the Blind, because so many times I go into schools for learners all over the country and they're not aware of APH. And anyone can check out this website and shop for materials and see what they have there. But your learners who are legally blind, completely blind certainly, um, qualify to be on what's called the APH count. So that acronym APH, for American Printing House, there is an APH count in every state. Your administrators at the schools uh, should be getting notifications, typically from the Department of Education in your state, to make sure that any of the learners who qualify are on the APH count. It's a list. It's a quick form to fill out. When you fill that out and they're on the list, you can order any of these materials during the school year for your students for free as free loans. And there are things here like protractors with large print and tactile and rulers that will magnify and also have tactile um, markings on them. So for a learner who can't see those markings on a protractor or another measuring device, they would be able to feel them and that's really important. And so you're able to order these materials and there's also tactile graphics and tactile graphics can be really important for learners who are blind or low vision and also another great multi-sensory approach for any of your learners who may benefit. This is a low cost method of providing tactile graphics. It's called the Sensational Blackboard. Again, this link is at the end of your handout. And essentially you put any type of piece of paper on top of this board that's about um, eight and a half by 11. They have different sizes. And when you write on it with a typical pen, a ballpoint pen, whatever you draw raises so that they can feel it. So to give you an example, when I was in a math classroom with a third grader who was recently legally blind and she was trying to use a magnification device to see what was up on the board, but she could no longer see it. And her paraprofessional was sitting with her and the teacher was drawing on the whiteboard for all of the students to see two large circles with five smaller circles in each large circle to show the concept of two times five, five times two, two groups of five, and she was demonstrating that for multiplication. The student who was blind could not see that. So her paraprofessional had the sensational blackboard, put the piece of paper down, drew the two large circles, drew the five smaller circles in each one, and that student could feel the concept of five times two. And that's just one example. There are tactile graphics for maps. There are many, many materials um, available that really can help students who are blind or low vision. Your TVI can order. Your special educator can order. Um, that's a sensational blackboard, but really be aware of the American Printing House for the Blind. And please make sure your students are on that count if they qualify and check that out for resources and materials that can really support the learning process. So on that note, I believe we are close to our 5 o'clock p.m. I can't believe it's 5 o'clock p.m. already. That flew by. Um, if you need to be in touch with us or would like to be in touch with us after this afternoon, atfred.com. Um, you can certainly connect with us on Facebook or Twitter as well on the top left-hand corners. We do post a lot of great things there. And uh, please be sure to fill out your evaluation at the end of this webinar as well. And I will stop sharing my screen to check out the chat and see if there are any questions from you at this time. Thanks very much for your feedback. I'm happy that you benefited. Um, I see Teresa's asking if there's any Chrome apps that are similar to Panther Math. Uh, not at this time that I have found. I have not found the equivalent um, except for Equatio, which would allow them to type with math symbols, but not by tapping on them. They would have to type them or speak them. So I have not found an equivalent to math, Panther Math papers on Chrome yet. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I just haven't found it yet. <laughs> Do 
Panther Math Paper and Mod Math are very similar, but Panther Math Paper does allow for more advanced math. So if you have learners who are moving up to more advanced math, Lori, um, in higher education, you, then you would want them to be using Panther Math Paper. I don't think Mod Math has added those yet. I know they were crowdsourcing funding to do that. I think somebody is asking for the handout possibly, so I'll put that link up. I'm putting the link to the handout in the chat again for anyone who may want to click on it and get to that again. Hey Brian, thanks for coming. Thanks everyone. Diana. Yes, the handout does have um, what it costs, and when you click on the link, you'll be able to see if it's free or if it has a cost associated. Uh, for geometry, there's a few other great tools. There's GeoGebra on your handout um, and a few others, so there are a couple other geometry apps and extensions listed on your handout. I do like GeoGebra, G-E-O, here I'll type it in there, G-E-B-R-A. Excellent. Thanks, Deborah. Please share the handout. Absolutely.